Hi hey folks, uh, Chris Finland here with another video. I'm going to talk a little bit today about some of the uh, administrative functionality around premium per user. So uh, if your tenant's been enabled for premium per user so far, if you were one of the priority access customers or one of the customers that we've uh, turned on in the last few days, you'll see um, once you are able to start adding premium per user workspaces as I've done here, um, you want to know, hey, what are the different settings or ways that I can kind of manage this? So one of the questions that's come up, if I go to my premium per user workspace here, you see I have a bunch of reports here, including pagination reports, and then a dashboard data set and a regular Power BI report. So if I go to the settings tab here, and if I go to premium and then turn this off and then hit save, you'll see it says, hey, you want to remove this from premium capacity. I can hit remove from premium. That'll take me back here. You notice my content is still here. Um, there's there, nothing has happened to it per se, and I can still access the workspace, etc. So I'll just show you if I switch over here to PPU4 and then come back to Premium Producer. I can still access the workspace. Mickey and these other items are here. They just don't run if I try to go and run on them. So what I need to do is go back to settings and I can re-enable this for premium capacity. So there you go. And I put it back as Premium Producer workspace and now everything is now available again. So that's one of the things just to keep in mind is just because you change it in and out of premium per user, uh, turning that switch on and off, your content doesn't go away. Now, obviously, if I tried to run a page report without that turned on, it wouldn't work. But that's one of the things I wanted to kind of clear up. Uh, so one of the big things, however, I wanted to cover off on is if I go to my admin portal here. So I have my admin portal, and you'll see now there's an option for premium per user preview. Now, this will obviously drop the preview tab once we get to GA. But some of the things you notice here is that you know I spoke with each of the different area program managers about things that they'd like to expose uh, to the tenant admin. The idea around these is that you're not looking, this isn't, this shouldn't be feeling like a capacity. It's just the ability to use the premium features in your tenant. So there were a lot of the things like this idea of turning workloads on and off didn't really make sense. Uh, again, with the new infrastructure that's available with Premium Gen 2, which is what Premium Per User runs on, there is no idea of managing uh, memory or uh, CPU in this context, because again, you'd be ultimately paying on a per user license basis. But there were some tenant settings that they felt were important that customers should have the ability to go and kind of set for these features. So one of them was around this idea of automatic refresh, this idea that where you can go and have a direct query connection, how often that'll go and update if you've set up your report that way and what are the things you want it to change on. Should it be, you know, is it an automatic page refresh? And if so, you know, should it should be seconds, minutes, hours, days, and then if you should be a detection better. Uh, another item to keep in mind is the data set workload settings. Now, by default, you see that this is set as read only. Now, if I change this, I can change it to read write and then apply, and it'll apply that to my XMLA endpoint uh, for my tenant. Anytime I set it up in a premium workspace, I'll now have the ability to do read write with that. Uh, so that's something I wanted to quickly kind of cover off. Now, will there be additional items here? Maybe. Uh, this is really up to you know customer feedback and what the different area owners are comfortable with, uh, giving people control over one way or another. Because again, the idea is this is supposed to be kind of a set it and forget it item for you and your end users. Another big thing that I wanted to cover off on, however, is the new additions in the tenant settings. So if I go to my tenant settings here, uh, there's a couple of important things to keep in mind as you look at this. So one of them is this allow users to try Power BI paid features. Now, originally, this was just related to Power BI Pro trials in your tenant. So your ability for end users to opt into a pro trial uh, in their tenant. Uh, if they want it, if they were, say, a free user, or if you've signed up for your own tenant and you're a free user, we give you a pro trial for 60 days. Now, you'll see here that this is now paid features because you can either use the pro or premium per user trial that's available in tenant for 60 days. Now, during the preview period of premium per user, you will be able to renew yourself every 60 days until we go to GA. So even if your countdown goes to zero, the next time you try to access a feature, it will just prompt you again to renew your trial. So don't worry about that 60 day limit right now as it relates to premium per user. Also for Power BI Pro trial users, we're enabling the premium per user features for you in the background as a sneak preview as part of your pro trial. So as long as this is turned on for your tenant, you should be able to opt in to a premium per user trial from your uh, Power BI workspace or home portal. Uh, 
the big thing is if you happen to have had a pro trial in the past prior to premium per user coming along and that trial has expired and you've you know eventually either paid for premium or pro independently of that there was a chance that you could potentially uh, run into an issue when you try to enable the trial for yourself. Now we've issued some updates to ensure that that doesn't happen for most users and by the time you potentially are using premium per user probably won't be an issue for you but if for any reason uh, you seem to be blocked or locked out from uh, using premium per user trials in your tenant and you know that this switch is enabled you want to make sure you contact customer support. Uh, another item that just showed up this weekend for many users, and I wanted to make sure I'm making aware of it. So you'll notice there's now a lot of new export settings available here. This is in direct response to the uh, addition of premium per user and the ability for organizations now to use paginate reports outside of a dedicated capacity because uh, one of the biggest things you do with paginate reports is export that data out in a variety of formats. And if you didn't have this control at the tenant level, uh, this would potentially open up some security issues for your organization. However, all these switches are now here and they are tied to both Power BI and paginated reports. So you see export to Excel, export to CSV, uh, export reports as PowerPoint or PDF, and then some special new ones that we've added specifically for uh, paginated report formats, because paginated reports can also be exported out in Word, MHTML, and XML. Now, do I expect you to be exporting out XML and MHTML a whole lot? Probably not, but we wanted to be um, as thorough as possible to ensure that you had this here. Now, one of the things I want to just highlight briefly is this says export reports as image files. This only applies to the API. This doesn't apply if you happen to have the ability to export out uh, a file to an image. Now, you can't do this right now through the UI with the paginate report, which is actually an oversight on our part. Uh, however, you can do this through the URL parameters. So something to keep in mind is if you um, don't want the ability for people to export out uh, paginated report items, uh, you should keep this in mind as you're managing your content in your tenant. Uh, so email subscriptions, another thing, this is not changed, but with paginated reports, obviously you have a, a, an attachment with every single type uh, of file here. If you disable this as part of your export settings, it also will be unavailable to you in from the export menu or from the subscription menu if you're trying to subscribe to a paginate report. So again, that's something that I'd like you to keep in mind as you consider uh, some of the premium per user items you now are dealing with with your both paginate reports and Power BI reports. Another one I want to highlight real briefly is the uh, allow live connection. This is important to keep in mind because this is not just analyzed in Excel. This also touches on if you want to create a pageant report against a Power BI data set and you're using that Power BI data set connection, this turns that on and off. So if you are trying to create a new report against that connection and you have this turned off, it won't work. You won't be able to find that endpoint. If you happen to have a report already loaded up to the service that's using the Power BI, uh, endpoint and you turn this off, that should still work. That won't affect any reports you've already loaded. It's just your ability to go and create net new reports in Power BI Report Builder if you have this enabled or disabled. So again, with Premium for User and a lot more people potentially using this content and these features, and again, we're very excited about that, wanted to make sure you were aware as a tenant admin exactly what this potentially would mean to you and your end users. Okay, so that's all I have for you in this brief video around Power BI Premium Per User. Again, if you have not opted into the public priority access, uh, that period has ended. There are no deployments going out this week as it's the Thanksgiving holiday here in the US. Once the Thanksgiving holiday is over, however, we're simply going to be enabling this capability for all tenants worldwide. So there's no more sign up period, it'll just be turned on for everybody. And assuming you have the trials available in your tenant as a pro user, you can simply opt into premium per user and use those capabilities for the entire preview period. And again, it's important for everybody to opt in, not because we're trying to trick you and get you the, you know, excited about the features, that'd be great, but really 
this preview period is for us as much as it is for you to ensure, you know, this is a big new rollout of these capabilities and a new infrastructure. We need to make sure that this infrastructure uh, is working. So far, the results have been very, very promising. Um, this has gone, it's gone very, very well, you know, knock on wood as we've uh, initially done this, but, you know, make sure you take advantage of these capabilities. Again, it's very exciting. And there's a lot of new stuff coming uh, over the next few months that'll make it even more exciting as, it, as we relate and start releasing and talking about things like pricing and some of the new features that'll be here, including uh, the ability to subscribe to Power BI reports and get an attachment in a PDF or a PowerPoint uh, when you do that subscription, which will be a premium only feature. Again, uh, thanks for everyone listening. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.